So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you have some kind of Mac computer that has been really slow, maybe it's been acting up, taking a while to open programs or to shut down, that kind of thing. If that's the case, keep watching this video because I'm going to potentially save you a trip into the Genius Bar or a call to Apple Care. This is essentially the same steps that a Genius or an Apple Care advisor would perform over the phone. So stay tuned and I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Just before we get into the video, I do recommend being as up to date as possible. So if your computer is able to run El Capitan, definitely upgrade it if you're on any earlier versions of software. The steps I'm about to show you is pretty much the same all the way back to say 10.6, does change slightly. Now for all of you people saying don't upgrade to 10.11, you know, it's not optimized, it causes a lot of system issues, it's not the case. If there were some of those issues on release, Apple has fixed that up. Currently 10.11 is very stable, so I do recommend updating to 10.11 or, you know, as up to date as you can make the computer. Some of the older ones can't go to 10.11, obviously. If you're worried about any issues with updating, make sure you have a time machine backup before you update. And obviously, if you're not satisfied with the update, you can roll the whole computer back to the version your computer was on whenever you made the time machine backup. So, first things first, let's come up into the top left hand corner. Apple logo about this Mac and on 10.11, well 10.10 .10 and above, you'll be able to see a little storage tab here. So hit that and you're going to have a look at your Macintosh HD. So this is essentially your hard drive. Don't pay any attention to this. You won't have this. This is a boot camp partition on my hard drive. It just means that I've installed Windows on this. So just ignore this. This is what we want to be looking at. So a rule of thumb, I generally recommend people have at least 10% of their hard drive space free at any one time. So for me, with a 250 gigabyte hard drive, it's going to be about 20 to 25 gigs. You can even get away with about 15. So I'd say with 250 gig hard drive, 15 to 25 gigabytes free, you should be fine. If of course you notice up here, you've only got a couple of gigabytes free or you don't have any space free, that's more than likely where the issue is going to be. So make sure you delete a whole bunch of stuff off the computer and make sure you bring the hard drive back to about 10% free space. Next, what you want to do, you want to close that down, back to Apple logo, system preferences, and you want to come here to users and groups. Now you want to come up here, you want to select your current user that's having the issues and you want to hit up here and go login items. Now you can see up here, this is just some random sort of test account I created for the purpose of making this video. But on your normal account, you'll probably see at least say four, five, six, seven different applications here. Now, obviously it's pretty self-explanatory. These items will open automatically when you log in. So when you log into this user account, all of these applications will pop up here and they will load. So you'll see them appear down there with a little black dot underneath them. So if you want to get rid of these, so say you want to get rid of Dropbox, select Dropbox and click this little minus button here. Same for AnyTrans and Evernote, we'll click that and also Evernote Help. I'll leave Flux up just because I like Flux. Um, so once you've finished all of that, let's go back into settings and we'll just close that down. And the next thing I'm going to get you to do, open up Safari hit the Safari tab in the top left hand corner, go clear history, clear all history, clear history. So essentially what this does, it's gonna empty out all of the Safari browsing history. So your cookies, your website data, all that kind of stuff. Generally when I have to do this for other people, they haven't done it for a year or two. So they've got thousands and thousands of websites and cookies and all this website data on their Safari application that's just sitting there and they don't need it anymore, so I definitely do recommend going there and clearing it all out. It's not going to delete anything important. You'll still have all of your favorites and stuff here, as you can see here. The only thing it will do, just in case you have, you know, uh, you log into Facebook or YouTube and you've got your credentials saved. So if you were to go to Facebook now, you wouldn't have to log in again because everything is already there. It's going to reset all of that, but all you have to do is just put in that information again and sign back in. That's essentially all you'll lose. So let's close down Safari. If you guys want to know a quick little tip, if you want to force quit an application or just shut the whole thing down, on your keyboard, hold Command and then press the Q key and that will just quit the program. Now, once you've exited Safari, come down here to the Finder, click on Finder and come up here, click on Go 
and then hover your mouse over the computer and what you want to do is on your keyboard hold down the option key and you can see here just above computer the little library folder will pop up and you can see there right now I'm tapping the option key cool so let's click on library and what you want to go in here is you want to go into caches now you'll see a whole different lot of weird folders here you'll have more than me obviously because this is just a, a random account I've created and generally the one on the top left hand corner is this little CF bundle identifier so what I recommend doing is just completely clearing out the caches folder altogether so click just a single click just single click on this CF bundle identifier on the keyboard another quick and handy shortcut hold down the command key again and then click the A button and that will highlight everything as you can see there and once you've done that you can either just drag them all into the trash can or you can click this little settings icon and go move to trash and we'll make sure that's all finished now when you do this make sure you are definitely inside the caches folder don't select the caches folder or don't control a all of these folders here because if you do that's going to delete everything on your user drive so your photos your downloads everything please just be really careful when to go back into the caches just double check sometimes a folder or two will pop back up there straight away if it does just leave it it's not a big deal now you're probably thinking that you have to empty the trash can because if you go into the trash can here you can see all of those caches folders but if you were to go empty and empty trash you would get this error message the cache.db is in use so just stop that one all that means is that those current folders are still being used by the system so a way to get around that is simply just turn the computer off and start it back up so essentially just restart the computer and that will close all of these folders down you can see it's already deleted some here but these ones here for example it won't let you delete but as soon as you restart the computer these will all shut down fully and then you can come back in here and empty the trash can so just do that on your next restart now once you've emptied the caches folder let's go back to library just have a look through here sometimes you won't have it sometimes you will you can come in here you can delete your cookies as well again if you have cookies that you do use or you need them say for example this is a school or a work computer maybe check with your IT department but generally I just recommend deleting them so it should be fine so empty your cookies folder come down here to input methods empty this folder again uh, I've got nothing here obviously but if you do empty it if you can see a folder called launch daemons empty that as well I don't have it on this particular computer but sometimes you'll have it on yours if you do go into it and just delete it all saved application state you can go in here and you can move these to trash as well these aren't really important the main one you're looking for is the caches folder but I just like to do those other ones you know just for the hell of it just to make sure you're already going into the library folder so you might as well now the next thing I recommend is checking out all of your background apps and activity so to do that come up here to the little finder icon or the spotlight search and type in activity monitor and we'll open this up now essentially all this does is it just gives you a insight into what exactly your computer is doing so you can see here QuickTime player this is what I'm using to actually record the screen so it's taking up 20% of the processor if you come here to the memory which is your RAM it's taking up 77 megabytes energy uh, it's not using that much at all oh, yes it is it's using up 8% uh, of my energy a disk don't really need disk at all the network it's just again don't really need it the main one you're looking at is CPU and memory so CPU have a look if you can see any apps up here that are taking a lot so flux for example it's taking up hardly anything um, but QuickTime here 20% so just have a look there see if there's any apps that you're not currently using that are taking up a lot also come to the memory this is your RAM this is essentially how much your computer can multitask or load things in its temporary memory kernel task again just leave that that's gonna be a system process but if you see things like Dropbox or or, um, or iTunes running you can just hit them 
and you can stop icon up here just click that and that will quit that process so you can see now in a second I might just go back uh, Dropbox is now gone so you've just shut down the Dropbox you also see here another quick little pointer physical memory so I have eight gigabytes of RAM I'm currently using 2.4 gigabytes so that's well under half so that shouldn't be an issue same with CPU you can see down here so the entire system is using about 5% user about 5% as well and we've got about 90% free now if your computer is being really slow this is probably going to be maybe like five to ten percent free so just keep an eye out here now the next step is to jump into safari or whichever internet browser you use you can use chrome firefox doesn't really matter if you're not using safari you remember how before i got you to go safari and then clear history do the same thing do the equivalent thing if you're using another browser so say for example if you're using chrome the settings are a little bit different to clear out all of your caches and website data and that kind of thing the same with firefox so just google it and it will show you how to do that for that specific browser but for now what we're going to do is we're actually going to search for any kind of malware that's been installed on the computer so to do that let's go to a website and it's going to be malware bytes now malware bytes one word bytes is with a y so b-y-t-e-s dot org so dot o-r-g now malware bytes it's free there is a paid option don't have to buy the pay one i've only ever used the free version so come down here to now this has probably changed by the time you're watching this video essentially just click the free download button make sure you've selected mac and just go download And that's going to download Malwarebytes to your computer. Now, as I said before, Malwarebytes will actually search for malware on the computer. So if you guys have been having those Adware Medic and um, Malware Search or Malware Defender pop-ups happening, this is actually going to search your computer for the source of those pop-ups. And if it does detect something, it'll give you the option to delete it. So once that's finished, come down into your downloads. Now, for most people, it's just going to be down here. If you're missing that, you can go to Finder and Downloads. And you can see here, we've got the Mac DMG, Malware Bytes, so we'll double click on that. And all you've got to do, like pretty much any other app in OS X, click it, drag to Applications, and replace, because I've actually already downloaded this. So pop your password in. And once it's installed, close this down. Go to your applications, look for M, there it is, Malwarebytes, open that one up. Open. And we'll agree or accept the terms and conditions. Password again. And we just want to hit the scan button. Now, this didn't detect anything on my computer, obviously, because I usually keep my whole computer pretty clean. And also this is a new user account. So there's probably gonna be nothing on here at all. But if you guys do find something, it'll give you a drop down list and you can select all of them. So if it does detect them, have a look through them because sometimes Malwarebytes will detect things that are innocent like extensions or add-ons and that kind of thing that are actually legitimate, but it will sometimes identify them as malware. So if it's not malware, if you know it's, you know, it's a trusted program or, extension untick them but for the rest of them make sure they're selected and malware bytes will give you an option to delete all of them and once we've done that we'll just close all of this down close that we'll close this as well and that's pretty much it make sure obviously you restart the computer come down here and empty the trash what i also recommend doing as well is just hitting the finder and have a look through here so go your maybe all my files or applications documents just essentially just do a cleanup of your system so if there's stuff you don't use delete it or move it off to another hard drive uh, old photos videos emails that kind of thing go through it delete as much as you can if you don't need it that should fix the problem of your slow mac 
if it's still happening, if your Mac is still slow, that's going to be a whole other separate video. And then that will be talking about possibly trying it in a different user account or booting the Mac into safe mode or even reinstalling OS 10 or erasing the hard drive. So this video is already getting a little bit long. So if you guys are still having issues, let me know in the comments and I will make, I guess, a part two to this video to show you the next step in order to solve your slow Mac. So apart from that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really appreciate it if you left me a, a thumbs up or a comment as to how I can improve these videos in the future. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching and I will see you later.